we might oh we do get the forsaken monument ask and ye shall receive that's hilarious we get a good hit in too hola welcome back thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch hello good game i really appreciate that whether this is your first video or you're part of the wolf gang already every individual second you spend here with us is you know returned and reciprocated with unlimited amounts of gratitude this dude's weird right i don't i don't know if i want to watch this youtube video <laughs> today we are playing with the moth god this is an orzhov based um enter the battlefield trigger deck i guess you could say it's got a lot of really cool things in the deck like Teragrid, the god of fright kaya the inexorable and mothra supersonic queen this is really what everything revolves around and then we're just flooding the deck with enter the battlefield effects to take advantage of lots of those effects will be discard and sacrifice effects which will of course trigger the god of fright bringing them over to our side of the battlefield which is a lot of fun if you're new to magic the gathering arena don't fright <laughs> i see what i did there uh this is a beginner video right we're going to talk about the deck list all of the individual cards the strategies the synergies we'll break down the game line uh, the gameplay the play lines and interactions there as well so you guys you know really come away from this video with a full understanding of how the deck operates effectively and efficiently with that being said if you do find any value within the video Give me a thumbs up, right? That's the greatest way that you can go ahead and support the channel with. Of course, subscribe and share the channel to all of your friends for future content. We have a 500,000 gem giveaway, 100 one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, uh, you know, more cash prizes and monthly free tournaments that have prizes with those as well. There's a lot going on with the community. Everything that you'll be looking for today will be located in my link tree. Just link tree. <laughs> Just Google Hello Good Game link tree. You'll find it. Everything's going to be listed there. Uh, the latest and greatest. So with that being said, let's jump into the deck and break it down. All right. The Moth God is um, maybe a mid-range based Azorius deck with 28 creatures, 8, 9 creatures. 30 uh, 3.5 average converted mana cost and 24 land so you know relatively balanced of course we have the new metal sleeves uh you can get those within our link tree under the buy mtga codes section uh really cool stuff by them and of course that supports me as well let's break down the deck right we mentioned what it revolves around so maybe let's start there with our end game engines and we'll reverse engineer everything so the deck revolves around Tigrid, God of Fright, a 4-5 with Menace. Whenever your opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent or discards a permanent card, you may put that card from the graveyard into the battlefield under our control. This is very, very nice. The Fable Passage, when it sacrifices, will come over. The Sagas, when they self-sacrifice, will come over. If our opponent has a Sacrifice deck, any of those creatures could come our way as well and then all of our deck is making our opponent discard making them sacrifice which is pretty cool of course on the opposing side we do have the lantern for four mana we can tap it target player loses three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card of course the sacrifice and discard will trigger the god of fright if we have both in play which is pretty cool and that's why we run four copies because two of them can be the god of fright and two of them can be the lantern we can pay four to untap the lantern, allowing us to reuse its ability more than one time each turn, which is a lot of fun. Moving away from there, we'll talk about all of the discard and sacrifice effects that we have in the deck. Acquisition Expert is the start of this within our two drops. We have four copies of it. It's a one, two. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals their hand. We choose um you know they reveal cards equal to the number of creatures in our party and then we choose one of those cards and discard it for them which is really cool again that would trigger tigrid we also have the elder fang disciple this is pretty cool because it's a cleric and the acquisitions expert is a rogue so we can actually fill our party to get sight of extra cards from the expert if we play the disciple first of course the disciple does the exact same thing but we don't get sight of extra cards we only get to look at the one when it enters play, each opponent discards a card. Easy, right? Moving away from there, we do have four copies of Demon Disciple, a 3-1. 
When it enters play, each player sacrifices a creature or a planeswalker. Again, if they sacrifice something and we have the God of Fright in play, it brings us over to our side, which is really nice. Two copies of Soul Shatter at instant speed for three mana. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker with the highest converted mana cost among creatures and planeswalkers that they control. That's really quite nice. And of course, we do have the Clack Bridge Troll as well, an 8-8 with Trample and Haste. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent creates three zero one white goat creature tokens. At the beginning of combat on our turn, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. If a player does, tap the troll. You gain three life and draw a card. So, you know, they'll be sacking the goat. We don't get the goat back because it's a token. It doesn't really make it to the grave for Tigrid's ability. However, once they're out of goats, they are either sacrificing their creatures that we will get or we just have the troll to attack and throughout that process it acts as a draw engine for us as well which is really cool so that's all we have for the sacrifice effects and discard effects in the deck we branch off from there now with luminous broadmoth a 3-4 with flying and whenever a creature you control without flying dies return it to the battlefield under your control with a flying counter on it everything in our deck really revolves around this for instance all of the creatures have either sacrifice or discard abilities that will now re-trigger when they re-enter play through mothra this is triggered primarily through our demon disciple it enters play you know your opponent sacrifices something you get that something back the disciple re-enters play you know you can if you want sacrifice it again but it won't come back a third time because the second time it will have flying from the moth if you want your opponent to sacrifice another creature if you don't want them to sacrifice another creature because maybe there aren't any in play you can move into their hand start having them discard right because you'll be sacrificing an elder fang or an exquisition experts that's already been in play on the re-entry once it has flying and then this card dies it comes back with flying they have to discard again and we're just pulling all of their cards back uh, to us, which is really cool. We also have the Skyclave Apparition. You know, this isn't a sacrifice or a discard ability, but we can have it re-enter play with the Moth, which is a lot of fun. It's a 2-2 when it enters play. XL target non-land, non-token permanent with converted mana costs four or less that an opponent controls. When it leaves the battlefield, that opponent creates an XX blue illusion creature token where X was that card's converted mana cost, which is really nice. Of course, we do have two copies of Solum Simulacrum just to kind of round out the deck. And again, it has the ETB or Enter the Battlefield effect that we're really looking to capitalize off of. A 2-2, when it dies, draw a card. When it enters play, pull a basic land and then shuffle, which is decent. And of course, four copies of Kai the Inexorable. Plus one, put a Ghost Swarm on a target creature that we control. It gains when this creature dies or is put into exile. Return it to its owner's hand and create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying. Everything that we have is basically insured by the Moth if it dies to come back with flying. So we will use Kaya to put a plus on our Moth, which is really nice. And then if something happens to that Moth, we get it back. We can also put uh, the plus onto the creatures that we've had come back with the Moth. Because now if those creatures with flying die, instead of, you know, just dying, they come back to our hand for us to cast again. And then have them die, re-trigger, get that second ETB effect, and then still the creature with flying. So we could basically just recycle all of our creatures with ETB effects through Kaya's plus ability while getting plus one or one one spirits with flying, which is incredible. So we get the creature back to our hand. We get to trigger the ETB effect again. We get to attack or block with it, have it come back with flying and re-trigger the ETB effect again. And then Kaya's plus goes back onto it. It dies back to our hand. We can reuse it. And that cycle will just go on and on, my friends, which is a lot of fun within this deck. Minus three, XL target non lands permanent, you know, just going on the defensive, taking control of any of your opponent's threats. And minus seven, you get an emblem with at the beginning of your upkeep, you may cast a legendary spell from your hand, graveyard, or cards you own in exile without paying its mana cost, which is fine. You know, you minus, and then you can play your Kaya back every turn. You can play your Tigrid back every turn uh, with no really any consequences to it, right? So that's quite fun. Four Fable Passages, four Temple of Silences, because we don't have any one drops, so we may as well scry. Four Pathways for Land Consistency, six Swamps, and six Plains. No sideboard today. So that's the deck list, and we talked about a little bit of the strategy and synergy there. Really, you're looking to not 
be removed and grind out matches, right? We have a little bit of removal. Oh, I forgot to mention Elspeth's Nightmare. This is a destroy target creature an opponent controls with power two or less. Then they reveal their hand. We choose a non-creature, non-land. They discard it, so that would trigger the God of Fright. And then exiling their graveyard, just a little bit of recursion control, which is really nice. Um, so again, your main goal is to have them discard their hand, right? Have them sacrifice all their creatures. That goes into, you know, basically hyper mode once you get Tigrid in play, because now you're getting value for all of those discards and all of those sacrifices. And then, you know, the Moth will increase that value as well, because now they're double triggering. And then you get Kaya out to make sure that your Moth never goes anywhere. And then any creatures that did go somewhere that came back with flying, you can now put the plus one to get a 1-1 flyer and get that card back to your hand to reuse, which is, you know, very cool. So this deck works. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm just working on fine tuning it a little bit more. You know, we have a successful win rate in Mythic. And, you know, more importantly than that, we're just having fun with new builds every day. So let me know what you guys think of the Moth God. Is this a deck that looks fun to you? Are you excited to uh, see the gameplay footage or test it out for yourself? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video on your way as well. Download Magic the Gathering Arena Assistant, all of the metagame analysis, statistics, you know, your deck collection uh, or your, not your deck collection, but your general collection information and even a deck advisor, which will recommend you decks to play based on your current collection. So that's for free to everybody in my link tree as long uh, along with the new store, which is selling cosmetics, which we can get you guys a discount in uh, or whatever. So get in on that. And we also are giving away a $10 gift card to the shop every single YouTube premiere. So if you're not watching the YouTubes live, check in with us. You have to like the video and then, you know, comment on my wolf comments or I'll I'll tag it like contest comments or something. And then everybody just list the number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like one to a hundred. And, um, you know, make sure to go in order so nobody's double picking a numbers because, you know, if you're the second one to pick a number, you're going to miss out. First come, first serve on the number picks. Um, so make sure that you pick a unique number and i really recommend to make it easiest for everybody you go one two three four five work your way down to 100 uh in fact i insist and if you don't do it i'll delete your comment ah so now you have to listen so check out all the sleeves all the things in the store that you guys can uh check out and that's of course in the link tree link in the description google hello good game link tree you'll find that as well uh it's got all your information that you'll ever need for me there and again, thank you guys for your time and attention. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the channel to a friend, support financially on Twitch, Patreon, YouTube, and our Amazon link, plus the new affiliate for Grey Viking games that we have going on as well. Really cool products, instant delivery. You know, you can pay with whatever source that you want as well, and it's a trustable source, which is nice. I use it myself. The community's using it, which is a lot of fun. So check it out. And more importantly than all of that, shenanigans and, you know, call the action bullshit. <laughs> enjoy today's gameplay footage right that's what we're all here for and uh it's been my pleasure brewing these decks for you guys for the last two years we're coming up to a thousand videos and again i could not be having more fun day to day with you guys as a community thank you all so much 500 000 gem giveaway 100 one-on-one -on -one sessions with myself uh we have 100 20 gems uh 20 for gems as well whatever uh Free cash prize monthly tournaments, uh, Brawl and Artisan, and lots more. So much stuff going on. Just get in on it, right? Don't hang around the outskirts. Come and introduce yourself. Say hello. Uh, I'd love to meet you. So take care, enjoy, and we'll be back in a few minutes with some more degenerate thoughts. <laughs> okay, our opponent goes first. The land looks nice. Where's the moth? We do need a fourth land as well. We curve into the apparition nicely. There's the land we need. Now we're just looking for a moth. Huh. This is why we plan what we want. We always ask for what we want. Ask and you shall receive. This has it's been a saying for a reason. Uh, we're going to lose our Skylave probably. I mean, Demon's Disciple and Apparition are both forms of removal for it. And they both hit on three, so... You know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so that, now they need to get like another creature in play somehow. It's all good. We've got this. Oh. Yeah, 
Interesting. I'm not even sure. <laughs> Let's check out what they've got going on here. They're playing Mardu. White, red, and black. Okay. Oh, we don't have any party members because it's... I see. Nice. Okay. I mean, that Soul Shatter should be hitting something else, I think, but... Oh. But that immediately fizzles, right? So we're discarding... The Disciple. Let's draw their last bit of removal. Right? Maybe they might not remove it because we get the draw, but it's certainly tempting for them. We only have six next turn, so we're not double dropping. We probably should have kept the Disciple, so we could have double dropped, but I want to kill... Oh, no, they get to choose. That's annoying. And they're playing with it as well. Wow, okay. And we toss the land like an idiot. <laughs> okay. Let's just go for it. Take the damage. They're not going to block it. They have four cards in hand. We need to get really lucky. If they have removal, we're kind of screwed. Wow. Okay. This is not good. Let's force them to discard. Rankle? And then we'll have them sack. We sack our disciple, they discard again. Liliana. And whenever this dies or is put into exile, it goes into the battlefield under their control. So let's just hit with the flyer. I wonder, like, which one it gets it, though. You know what I mean? Does the moth get it or does Atheros get it? Because technically, like, it's very confusing. Let's just bring the pain. Oh, no. Good top deck for them. See, now, do we get it as well? Or, like, what goes on here? Because I see it is on the stack. No, it just fizzles. Not great. Ooh. That is nice. They'll get the draw here. Do we get it now back? Oh no, that's our own creature we get back. The Disciple has less attack power. Innocent people are slaughtered. So, would this save it? I 
I don't know. Let's just play it safe. Right? Because I don't know... Because last time they got it, even though we should have gotten it, like, it as well, right? So it's, like, really hard to know if we would have gotten it or they would have gotten it. You know what I mean? With Kaya's plus ability. That's a, you know, for science type situation. Yes. Easy trade. We get um, our apparition back. Let's just try it in case something does happen to it. We get our hit in. Let's keep the Skyclave in hand. It could Tybalt on us at any time. A land, that's okay. Ooh, and they get a lantern. But we can just like lose life. And discard these cards too. I want to make them think that they're good cards though for a while. Uh, that's four or less, right? Yeah. No need for that. Let's just take it. Let's ensure the apparition now. End our turn. Good game. Nice. Kaya absolutely saving the day for us. Nice. Our opponent goes first. This is like way too heavy of a hand with no land, so... We toss it. This looks just as bad, but hey, whatever. Let's try to roll with the punches. Right, we'll do our best. I think we probably lose our expert. It's hard to say, though. I like how they were trying to take Kaya. They're like, oh, I'll just take Kaya. They keep going back over to Kaya. They're like, which card do I take? Which card do I take? Do I take one of these two creatures that I'm allowed? Or Kaya? Or Kaya? Or Kaya? <laughs> oh, I hate losing against people like this. It makes me so sad inside. We just have to go for it. You know, we can defend against Valky. As long as it doesn't turn into an expert. Which it can do at instant speed, so... You know, I guess we actually can't defend against Valky. <laughs> it would force them into spending two of their mana, though. Okay, they just kill us. And they're gonna take Kaya that way. I mean, it makes sense. We have our expert back, though. Another discard isn't bad, right? We lose our Kaya. Which is fine. I bet they have more removal. We get to actually see in their hand and take it. Let's take Doom. And we just force another discard here. Oh. Well, that gets rid of the sack effect. That happened to us in another game, too. And we knew they had it. That's on me. Oh, well. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They either drew land play the God of Fright, which we nuke, and they know they we will nuke this. Or they just play the Lantern and try to lonk on us. We 
It's three life. I still want to take care of their graveyard. Oh, it was a land. Nice. So how lucky can we get? I'm not sure how many creatures they will have, or Planeswalkers. I mean, maybe Tybalt, but it just looks like Doom, maybe. Lose some life. They untap. Let's lose some more life. It's good. More land. And now we have a Soul Shatter in hand if they play anything after we untap. We have five land. We don't need that many. Oh, no. What did I just do? Non-land permanent, I guess. Thought we could sack our... Uh... <laughs> Alright, let's lose three life. We also get a Lantern in play. And they're just going to lose life. Right, same as we are. We can sack our own Lantern, I guess. And then we have Lethal. Oh, but they can tap it multiple times here. We'll discard a card. To lose three life. Good game. And we top decked Akaya, which is amazing. Nice! We go first. Land doesn't look great, but it's not the baddest of the bad. And with this planes on top, we're gonna channel just that, right? We're gonna channel planes off the top for apparition. Let's see how this pans out. Definitely needing our third land. Uh, or sorry, fourth land. Brush fire is annoying. I guess we take a turn off. It kind of sucks. Land can stay. It's not a passage, which is good. Take the Mammoth, keeps them from the Henge. In our library with the passage. End our turn. We can't block the Mammoth. But we do drop five. This is a passage, so they could still henge. Which is pretty crazy that you can henge off a Brushfire Elemental. Right? Really crazy. Watch them have it. I bet they do. There's no Emberclave. Down to 11. Ooze, so no henge. Okay. Let's take a white source here. Maybe. Go planes. Are you there? <laughs> <laughs> We can take a black source here, I guess. Nope. 
You know, I'm worried about a cleave. Right? They get another red source. No attacks. Now we pray. <laughs> now we pray. We could double drop these disciples. So that could be cool, but let's see. It is a cleave. No, they take our God of Fright. Are you kidding me? What an absolute clown off. Ouch. We just die. I mean... Yeah. We'll play one more match after this. That does not satisfy me. That has ripped all my satisfaction away. I would have rather to cleave. Nice, bro. Ouch. Our opponent plays first. Let's see how else we can get perfectly countered in this match. I feel like every match, it's been, you know... Just like a story written to beat us, right? It's like... That is literally the narrative. Let's do our best here, though. Pass our turn. We're going to pull our second planes there, and then this is our second swamp. Of course, we're playing into counter magic, so none of this matters. Hashtag boring, bro. Just get in there. This is a mill deck. This is rogues. Okay. This is the annoying rogues. Wow. Tick tock, baby. Time just flies by when you're having fun. <laughs> oh! oh, goodness gracious. Ace Chi Chi, why are you so darn funny? Jesus, like, quit alt-tabbing to Pornhub every 10 seconds. Just play the game.
I love it. We'll force them to discard. Sure. It's a party rogue deck. Rogue d players never cease to amaze me. Slither Wisp. Interesting. This guy's just like, I'll throw whatever I've got out there. Maybe it works. The draw engine, I have to take it. They play another creature with flash, maybe we can nuke it. He's trying to pull something out. There he is. Got to do some things that turn, at least, without 10 holdups. A borrower. They're just gonna bounce it, so it doesn't matter. They can't play it, so I'm not sure why they do it now. Pass our turn. We nuke their grave. Main phase borrower. Got a Fright in play, I believe. Let's do our passage on top of their castle. Just straight flex on them. Land doesn't matter. Let's force a discard. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we got. Hopefully it's something good. Hopefully it's something good. <laughs> a land... Well, heck yeah, I'll take a land, Billy. All attacks, borrower can't block. Two moss to rain down terror. I'm feeling relatively comfortable. 20 life, 38 cards. Time for hidden companion, Zerasan. Takes their Clackbridge troll. Right? What else would it take? Maybe a Demon's Disciple, but definitely the Troll, I think. It would make sense to do the Troll. Nice. Oh, that's a 5 CMC. What am I thinking? The 4-4. Four, four. It's only 4 CMC. <laughs> they, maybe they were thinking that too. Uh, we had the Moth to play on top of it though, so... You know, that wasn't rewarding enough either. We need one more match. We need a good matchup, right? Our opponent goes first. Our hand's way too heavy. Let's toss it. Keep 6. Soul Shatter goes... Working into our Skyclave, I guess. Force in play. Innkeeper right away. Yikes. It's not bad. They're gonna be drawing, though. Yeah, 
Yikes. Let's get as much value as we can. Alright, just get in that hand. It just sucks that they're on the play. Right, so they get to play a land and immediately play the Lovestruck Beast on top of the Innkeeper. For the draw, right? Like, it just sucks. In order to dodge the Henge, we have to take the Lovestruck Beast, but they get more draws from it. It's just annoying, and I hate it. We can attack the Never the Double Block. Four cards in hand. Let's see how many they draw this turn. Alright. Let's see how many cards they draw this turn. None. We lose the expert. They're just gonna sack the one one token. Not good for us. No attacks. I mean Kaya can minus on the beast. Ooze isn't the worst. It's definitely not good though. Cruel is the best deck right now. Like if you're looking to rank up, Cruel is the most consistent deck to play with. Right, it's not hard to tell why. They probably have removal or cleave to just finish us, but hey, we got a dream, right? You got a dream, right? They must have a cleave. You know what I mean? It has to be an ember cleave. In which case, they just win. Who cares? All right. It's like we got, yeah, perfect combo. All right. Not even. Not even cool. The beast hasn't hit yet. Let me just take another four. Super annoying. We don't get the land for Kaya. We get to drain their hand. But they've got an Ember Cleave with an Ooze. Like, we're just dead. There's nothing we can do. Funny they're playing a hench from us. <clears throat> we don't have lethal. And, you know, we're with our backs against the wall here. Bricked on land. They did too, but they definitely run more effectively off fewer creatures. Yeah, Ooze can grab too. That's a 6-6. Six, six. It's doing 12 damage. We can stop 2-4. 
Um, you know, not enough, that's for sure, but... Well, actually, I think we do stop all 10, don't we? But we don't kill it. They kill all of ours. And the moth died first. Hey, we get our land. Look at us go. Look at us go. Uh, I kind of want to get beat up. When you can walk through walls, anything will you. New game. So we do battle our, battle our way out as best we can. And, you know, it's we're just on the brink of being competitive against the best decks. Going first is great. The land's not here, but we can scry for it. And I think that should help us. That'll help us scry for our next land as well. Most important thing is that we always are hitting our lands. Right? Up to five. Let's force a discard. The Skyclave Relic, interesting. Colorless shenanigans. They do get a Skyclave there. So this is going to be really weird for us. One damage. Can they hit our moth? That's going to be the question here. They have four mana playing to five. The answer is no. They need to wipe our whole field. This is a perfect play line for us. Another relic? That's A-OK. -okay. okay, easy win. Easy win. Expert in play. We get to look at two cards. And of course we have the God of Fright in play. So they come straight to us. Let's see what we get. This is going to be great. They can hide things from us too, right? Come on! I take a Forsaken Monument even. Though we don't have colorless cards. <laughs> This is an absolutely perfect play line when your opponent has no interaction and you just smile out. We might... Oh, we do get the Forsaken Monument. Ask and ye shall receive. That's hilarious. We get a good hit in, too. No colorless creatures and no colorless mana or anything, which is hurtful, but... You know, this is just super duper good game. We'll ensure the moth. You'll be fine. Is that not lethal? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It feels good when you get a perfect play line. <laughs> Pro player secret sequencing. Secret thing? Oh! <gasps> Ugin! Woof. Woof. I'm so happy with our progress. <laughs> it's been all stripped away. This is okay. Right, we'll get the draw.
We're just gonna beat Ugin down if they don't remove us. Straight ramp to Ugin with four land. Ouch. Do you guys see that smile of mine just get stripped away when they played Ugin? <laughs> okay, not the worst. They have an ungodly amount of land. I think we take their monument, right? Or do we take the elixir? Oh no, the monument's a 5 drop. We can't take it. Well, we could take that. Hmm. That's kind of annoying. We take the Construct. We take the draw. Moth and play. like a boss fight. Right? Anytime you fight Ugin, it's like a boss fight. <laughs> so that's not good, though. Like, that's good for us. So let's take that elixir. The 4-4 four -four doesn't threaten me. We have 26 life. They're down to 14. They will run out of creatures to sack soon enough. And we have the flyer. We can also have the discard or the, uh, you know, the sacrifice hit. Which we can do on the simulacrum. Are they going to feel the ruin us? What's going on here? Ooh, that is a lot of mana. Another 9-9. Nine, nine. I love that. Absolutely just what I want to see. We gain two life with the Simulate Chrome. Ah, We do have colorless spells. Look at us go. We get a land. We could have that discarded. Because they're just going to kill one of these dumb things. So let's make sure we get that last card out of their hand. Even though we could have, with the moth, had them sack them both. And then the troll would have done the third one. But the troll wouldn't. They would have just had the... Oh, it's another monument. Nice. The uh, construct can deal with us is the problem there. That costs four and a tap, which I guess they have. That's super annoying. We should be okay. I don't know if we'll survive this next turn, but if we do, we might be okay. I don't know. A land, they gain life. Plus they have that draw, which sucks. Big woofs. Big woofs. I mean, we have the draw through the Simulacrum, which is really good. Kills the Skyclave, sure. They get a 4 4. There's no attacks.
if we could top deck a God of Fright, that would be ideal. What are they spending their mana on? Holy, it's another construct. That'll be their third construct. Eight. It's a serpent, okay. I mean, that is annoying. It's a 10-10 too, because the uh, plus two, plus two buff. With trample. Super annoying. They've got nothing to discard. As long as they have those big creatures too, it's going to be really hard for us. Comes back, we get the draw, we get the land. Oh my lord. It's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. They're not going to sack anything or tap us. Like they'll just leave it. Right? They've got a massive thing with reach just chilling. Let's end our turn, I guess. We were so close. These are colorless, right? So that's just a good game. There's no way for us to win this, right? I mean, maybe we pull Kaya. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, even then, right? Does it, does it get us anywhere? Right, like they're just removing us from combat. It's got protection from multicolored, so it's like nothing we do even matters. I don't feel good about it. Like, it's just a standoff. They'll probably swing in on Kaya if they don't top deck an Ugin. Could be worse, but it's definitely not good. They have enough life, and they can just remove us from combat, right? She's dead anyway, so let's just take a kill. That's just clean. 
Or they'll just remove us from combat. Which they could have done. I'm surprised they didn't. Well, I guess I got in over my head. Now that's a top deck. They might sacrifice the drawbridge. No. Right, because if we don't attack, they'll just remove us from combat. And they'll kick Kaya anyways. Or I guess that would interrupt the uh, the blocking procedure. They just take it though. Interesting. Down to 16. What are they top deck? It's got to be an Ugin. We got our Kaya. They get our Ugin. 5-5 five, five giant that gains all sorts of stuff. Nice. That's something. So Kaya's dead here. But the serpent's tapping is the thing. Maybe the serpent doesn't tap. Stays defensively. That's a good play. I mean, we got a lot of life, though. All right, they should just race us. And they can. I mean, they have 18. We only have 12. As far as damage output goes. Okay, top deck. That's not it. That is not it. This thing can't hit us. They're only hitting for 16. Now they remember their labyrinth? Yeah. <laughs> oh, now they remember it. Great. Great, 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 great. Nice land, bro. Nothing playing your the whole set of lands in the top half. We're at eleven, they're only at seven. <laughs> Life link. Nice. That just wins the game. I mean it was a good match. It wasn't bad, right? It wasn't that bad. Good game. Wolf. All right, you guys. Big wolves. I like the deck. I think it works. I think we may need to fine tune it. Maybe there needs to be village rights. I'm wondering, right? Some draw. Maybe if we cut a Kaya, we cut a Tigrid, and we took two village rights. You know, this might be friendlier. Maybe we cut a land as well. Three village rights. Now we're really risking it for the biscuits because those village rights will draw us more lands, right? They will draw us Kayas. Um, they will draw us Tigrids that are later on in the game anyway. So maybe something like this, I'm wondering. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Of course, I read every single comment. I may not have the time to reply to them all anymore. But of course, I'm always there reading, getting a good laugh at everybody's thoughts and opinions and, you know, even just general insight that helps level me up as well. There's a lot of smart people out there. So... Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the channel to all of your friends to help support my channel. And uh, you can go ahead financially as well on Twitch, Patreon, YouTube, and Amazon. Our affiliate load for Grey Viking Games as well to get cosmetics. If you're a Scrooge McDuck straight balling type, uh, of course, it's not my job to judge how rich you are. I'm just grateful that you are. And all of the support that you guys have been giving the channel has been amazing. Thank you kindly, everybody. Whether, you know, you're just here for free with your time and attention, getting in on the giveaways, that's fine. I love that, too. Or if you're, you know, really helping fund these giveaways, you know, we wouldn't be here without you. Uh, really, in either way. So, cheers to you. Thank you for supporting the channel. I hope you have a, just a straight up magical day. You know what I mean? Go have some fun. And of course, I uh, will see you soon in the next video.